Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of our review of the EVGA Z77 for the win edition motherboard and we are going to take a look at the UEFI BIOS in this motherboard. Going to start with the first tab here. You can see the tabs at the top. You have overview, advanced, chipset, overclocking, boot, security, and save and exit. If you've seen uh, the since the first implementation of the UEFI BIOS from the EVGA, it uh, remains similar in layout and it actually uh, a little bit similar to the even the older BIOSes. But uh, of course, as UEFI, you can um, you boot to uh, 2.2 terabyte drives. I think that's uh, one of the features for uh, UEFI. And also here at the first tab, you have the overview. You can change the system uh, date and system time. And first, your BIOS info and BIOS version. These are grayed out. Of course, they're just there for information at what BIOS version you have. And uh, of course, the processor information and voltage information below and uh, more of the PC temperature and voltage health, which is typical of uh, of typically found in uh, all the other UFIs and the next tab is the advanced tab where you can begin to make changes the first one is the ACPI setting where you can enable or disable your ACPI auto configuration now these are all the default values as you can see and unless I will specify later which values I have changed earlier but uh, consider every setting you see here as a default uh, when when you first boot your system and of course you have enable hibernation ACPI sleep state lock legacy resource and S3 video repost options. Next one is the onboard devices configuration where you can disable all the extra features like USB 3.0. You see here you have, can disable the as media or the Intel USB 3.0 because they're all enabled by default. And you also have the Firewire adapter, a PCIe X1 slot, eSATA, Marvell SATA ports, um, PCIe lanes, and of course the um, Azealia configuration at the bottom. So you have the high precision timer then there as well. And the next one is the SATA configuration. And uh, by default, uh, this is an AHCI, which is good. Uh, if you, you are running an SSD, especially you want the best performance, you, you have to set it to AHCI. So thankfully it's already set to AHCI by default. And uh, you have uh, the SATA test mode here is disabled by default. Aggressive LPM support enabled. SATA controller speed gen three is where you select SATA, SATA one, SATA two, SATA three G. Uh, SATA, SATA 3 6G, Core Gen 3 is the latest because these are SATA 6 ports. You have the software mask configuration, it will refer to the SWFM configuration to enable or disable the storage features. And uh, of course, you can completely just disable the SATA controller right here on this option right on the top. And at the bottom, it shows you uh, the each independent, uh, which each port and uh, whatever, and uh, the settings you can enable or disable in there, such as hot plugging uh, if you want to. Uh, have a, a hot swappable hard drive if you have one of those cases and which uh, drives are plugged in if you have one right here so I have my SSD OS drive plugged in here right now and one of the uh, the Intel SATA 3 6G ports so it's being detected and also the options in there more all the rest of these of uh, the drives I have I've not plugged in any other drive right now so you won't see any uh, info there and the next one is the Intel Rapid Start technology. We can just one option. We can enable or disable it. Of course, disabled by default. USB configuration. You have your legacy USB support is enabled by default. And also, it detects automatically your mass storage devices plugged in. I have actually a uh, since I'm still installing some of my operating system, my uh, my test system software in here, and some of my drivers. I have. Um, actually have a this a, an external hard drive here and I have a thumb drive plugged in and uh, also you can see which devices are detected at the top you can see there that is detecting two drives one keyboard two mice and two hubs okay and the next one is the smart settings of course smart self test for uh, this for the hard drive for during initial boot disabled by default in this motherboard and next one is the hardware monitor where you can make adjustments for your smart fan especially for your CPU or uh, depending on your your uh, since I have, in this case I don't I I don't I didn't make any adjustments on this one yet since I have all the fans in this case plugged into a fan controller so um, as a default configuration you have the step by step there for CPU temperature and uh, fan duty speed equivalent of that and underneath you have the voltage monitor it's great out you can't change any values in here but it just uh, shows you the voltages that are uh, if you can just make a quick 
uh, look at well if you have any uh, abnormal voltages in here before you proceed. And uh, the last one is the Intel Smart Connect technology, and you also have one, only one setting here, similar to the Intel Rapid Start technology, uh, enable or disable. And the next tab is the chipset tab. You have the system agent as the first sub menu in here. Make several changes. Most of them are disabled except for the C state pre wake option. And underneath that, there's also a couple of sub menus for your graphics. So your primary display, you can adjust the internal graphics. Of course, uh, if you if you're, you're running uh, either a discrete or your Intel uh, graphics for the processor, these, these this is where you have those options available for you. You have the DMI configuration. Several more options in there. Uh, most of them, half of them are enabled by default, except for the extended sync control. These are more for advanced users. So. If you don't know what these mean, I would suggest just leaving them alone for now. And uh, this one is the Nordic PCIe configuration. You see a lot deep. These are, these are very detailed, uh, more advanced options here for users who are, uh, want to have more detailed control with their PCIe uh, Express lanes. These ones have a. Uh, you can even uh, see there. You can adjust which lane, uh, the road port preset value for each lane in here. It was only the lane 15, but uh, let's see here. Put two. See, the, this even this one is a little bit more too advanced for uh, for me, so I would first leave that uh, leave that as is. It's because uh, the EVGA Z7 for the win is after all for advanced overclockers. So there's a lot of options here that will probably not make sense to average users. And the next option here is the memory thermal configuration management. You have enabled by default. And the last one is GT power management control support, which are enabled by default at the bottom as well. And the next one is the ME um, management engine technology subsystem configuration. You have a couple of options here firmware update configuration, 4D management engine technology firmware, so you can reflash it through there. And uh, also shows you the firmware version and the firmware uh, type. And also the, at the bottom you have the, your, your uh, PXE optional ROMs, launch storage optional ROM, and your store AC power loss. These are all, of course, other options that are uh, shared with other motherboards as well. And uh, of course, oh, not completely exited. Uh, advanced chipset overclocking. Here is the, of course, the where you will make most of your changes here, the overclocking section. The first one at the very top, it's a sub option for memory configuration. Um, See here, I have set it. This one I've changed. This is not a default. It will. It would actually. Re was reading my 1600 memory, 1600 megahertz module as 1333. Even I said XMP profile one. It doesn't support my XMP profile two for some reason. I believe that's XMP 1.3. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, it's. I had to set the memory uh, frequency limiter to 1600 in there to match the uh, to set the frequency to one. 1600 and then adjust the volume. I will show you how to adjust the volume, the, the rather the voltage. I'll show you how to adjust the voltage on the um, on the menu above this one. But right below, you can adjust the individual memory timing control. You can set it to manual and the, the grayed out uh, memory timings. You can now make adjustments on each one, uh, especially here, first, uh, secondary, and third adjustments as well. So that's a lot more detailed options there. I'll leave it at auto for now. It defaults to 9 CL9. Since this is a CL9. Uh, memory module it defaults to that those values, and uh, see here. Go back to the next one is the CPU configuration. Of course, the submenu in here. You have the CPU information as the first, uh, the, the topmost option in here. It's just a grayed out uh, information of what your CPU, what CPU is installed. Since I have the i7 3770K CPU there, and that's what it is reading. And the next one is the other options in here for hyper-threading, uh, C1E, which is enabled by default. Um, and CPU ID, save, uh, execute disable bit, hyper prefetcher. Which are, these are all, of course, available in other motherboards as well. It's pretty standard for the CPU configuration. And underneath, at the very bottom, is the CPU power management configuration. See some more option here for CPU voltage. Gives you a value of 1 to 25. Six, I believe, and uh, IA core current. These are more advanced options, but uh, of course, probably some people are familiar with the EIST. 
and turbo mode uh, if you want to overclock do not disable turbo mode but some people would suggest disable EIST and C1E of course for uh, further stability but never disable turbo mode when you're overclocking and the next two options are power limit values here in here in a one eight watt steps I think you have 616 and 770 I will not touch this these if you're not familiar with uh, with uh, how to uh, how these affect your overclocking values and these are more uh, C states here you can enable or disable C3 C6 and C7 underneath also configuration TDP lock disabled by default uh, long duration power limit long duration ma power maintained more advanced options in here for power control and AC ACPI T state disabled by default at the bottom and uh, let's go back up you have the um, base clock setting here you can adjust, make adjustments and 10 kilohertz frequency uh, so it needs to be do a full reset it says there apply settings immediately and uh, you have the option of apply settings permanently after reboot see the grayed out values at the top are the current settings for that and uh, I forgot to show the memory configuration because uh, last I did a motherboard um, review. People asked me how much the frequency limiter uh, is capable of. This one actually shows up to, as you can see there, up to 3000 megahertz. So if you're a hardcore overclocker, this one definitely has a lot more options for you. Uh, it goes beyond the 2133 or uh, that, that uh, most enthusiast motherboard support. So I'm going to put it back to 1600, which is what I'm running my memory at. And the next one here at the bottom, you have the CPU multiplier control. Now, of course, if you have uh, you have the options here, you have three options here. You have auto, of course, the default manual if you're overclocking, and EVGA Elite ratio if you want to use the EVGA Elite software from desktop to adjust these values. You want to set it to that. And uh, all the V group in here, you can keep it at default. It's Intel spec. You can disable it completely, or you can adjust by percentages: 75, 50, or 25 percent. And the next one is the overcurrent protection uh, control. You have the OC mode disabled and enabled at the bottom. For more options here for overclocking, EVGA performance tweak enabled by default. EVG, EVGA. Uh, EV gauge. Uh, this does this motherboard doesn't come with that EV gauge, but if you're a user, if a user that has an EV gauge, um, EV EV gauge accessory, you can use this function in here. It's disabled. It's actually enabled by default, and says here that it will cause system fan one to not be in control if it is enabled. So if you're if you want to use that uh, that fan header, you would want to disable this one. And the next one is internal PLL voltage override disabled by default. And here is where you can make at the bottom you have your various various voltage uh, options here. The CPU V card control I have it in auto right now. You can change your manual and see what happens. Uh, sub menu opens where you can adjust the uh, CPU core uh, MV and uh, right at the bottom the value in there in millivolts. And same with the dim voltage. Actually, this one I've changed already. The dim voltage control. It was set in auto, I set it to manual, I set it to 1.5 volt uh, since I couldn't, it wasn't reading my XMP value in my memory. And you can also adjust the D1, uh, DIM 1 and 2 channel DQ VREF in here in, uh, in uh, millivolt offset, offsets. Of course, you use the plus and minus sign on your keyboard to adjust, make these adjustments. At the bottom, more advanced uh, uh, voltage control, you have VCC IO, AXG. VSA and PLL voltage control. You have the PCA voltage control as well, and your PWM frequency control. You see the options here. When it's set to manual, at the bottom you can show it. Uh, it shows you options for the frequency adjustments. Of course, you make adjustments with the plus or minus sign as well. And let's go. Let's turn that to auto, and pretty much it. And the next tab is the boot tab, where you can make options for uh, change options for the booting. And especially uh, the the drive you want to boot at here, here at the top just some basic configuration here quiet boot um, enabled by default you have the uh, optional ROM messages in there and uh, at the bottom you have the boot option priorities boot option one of course it's reading my uh, my SSD as the uh, for primary boot option or you can change it to whatever you want. There's the other only other drive I have in there is a thumb drive So that's what it the, those are the options it presents me If you have multiple drives here at the bottom you can change it with the hard drive VBS priorities where you can read which you can adjust which uh, Boot option you want to prioritize of course the higher uh, the drive at the first at the very top is the high priority drive 
where we boot from and the bottom one is the least prioritized drive and the next tab in here is a security tab of course most people where you're running their systems at home don't really need to make any adjustments here as they're a bit paranoid you can set your user password administrator password for the ufi or bios and the hard drive security configuration for hard drive password access and the next one the last one is the save and exit option for save changes and exit typical use discard changes and exit save changes and reset discard changes and reset save changes discard changes and restore defaults and at the bottom you have another shot at the boot override uh, other than the boot option boot tab uh, you can act, you can just immediately boot from whatever drive is here by going immediately in this part and selecting which drive you want to boot from and hitting enter and at the bottom you have the bios profile setup you can actually load or save uh, bios profile you basically have uh, i believe 10 banks here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's ten banks uh, for each BIOS. So we have three BIOSes in this uh, motherboard in particular. So that is 30 BIOS profiles available to us in the uh, in the Z77 for the Win motherboard. So that's a lot of BIOSes that you can just load and save as you wish. And that uh, pretty much covers it. And let's go back to the rest review and uh, you can read the rest review at www.hightechlegion.com. You can uh, click the link below for the full review and benchmarks. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash hightechlegion. Leave us a comment, ask questions, and again, thanks for watching and see you next time.